Welcome to yet another talk by really, really cool people. Uh, one is a little bit less cool, but he's a really great guy, Thomas. And he's way cooler than me. A bit more cool <laughs> than, and also a nice, really nice guy. They're going to talk about Kirigami with a really fancy title that they will pronounce. Yes. Right. So, um, I am going to say a dirty word during this. See if you can spot it. Um, well, the topic of the talk is about folding your applications, and the reason it is that is because we are talking about convergent applications. No one's noticed. Okay, <laughs> so the first point is we'll yeah, quickly introduce ourselves, uh, very quickly as, I'm, as I understand it. I'm Dan Lane at Earthward Jensen, uh, and I've been a member of KDE for many years. Um, and I'm a member of the Caligra and Gluon uh, teams currently and have been a member of many other teams uh, before that as well. Um, uh, sorry, no, the Caligra and Discover teams, Gluon is history uh, and a leftover from a previous talk. <laughs> um, I'm also an employee of Blue Systems and uh, normally don't look like a blue bird, but... Uh, yeah, I'm Thomas. I'm um, yeah. I've studied psychology, um, focusing on human-computer interaction, user experience, um, and through that I've come to KDE in 2008, and have been doing yeah, mostly yeah usability, user experience uh, things since then, um, as part of the KDE VDG, um, the design group, and since last year I'm also a member. Of the board. Yeah. I'm, I'm not uh, paid to work on KDE. I, my day job is at Flair Games. Where you get to help uh, Chuck Norris, a bunch of people, I think. Um, right, so, oh, yes, this was yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, what, what is Kirigami, um, well, probably already heard about it because uh, quite a few talks have actually mentioned it. Um, it is a framework uh, which yeah, is, is useful to create touch-optimized applications, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're only for touch devices. So as uh, Dan already said, it's for convergence. So um, Kirigami is your tool of choice if you want to create an application which runs both on traditional desktop computers with mouse and keyboard, but also on uh, yeah, touch devices, mobile, embedded, whatever, um, with essentially the same code base. That's the, the key part. Um, yeah, And it is also a means to uh, implement very specific human interface guidelines. So we often get asked, uh, why can't I create a, uh, an application following exactly the um, Android material design guidelines, for example? Um, and then usually our answer is two things. One is, well, you can, if you create an application that perfectly fits material design, then you cannot really use the same code base to uh, deploy the application on uh, desktop Linux or on iOS or uh, yeah, on any of the other systems because then they would feel alien there even more and would not be, or you would have to create different UIs which would not be consistent. Whereas um, Kirigami, we have our own uh, human interface guidelines with uh, some specific uh, interaction design concepts which uh, do diverge from what, for example, material design and uh, iOS do, but they also have a lot of baggage from time, for example, when phones were still smaller and you could still easily reach the whole screen with your thumb, whereas uh, right now you have large phones where, you, um, where your eyes should be more bottom heavy because that's what you can reach with your thumb. Um, yeah, it is a uh, supporting technology, so what Kirigami does is offer you some building blocks for your application um, to yeah, have a, uh, to create a UI easily, which is consistent with other Kirigami-based applications and consistent across platforms. So it is 
It was born out of plasma, so it was originally created to have something especially for plasma mobile. But um, it is not only Plasma. So the, the same application can also run on, uh, for example, Android, on iOS. Um, and of course, if you run it on a desktop computer, uh, it can also run on uh, any other desktop environment. It can run on Windows. It can run uh, on Mac OS. Yeah. Um, it was originally started as uh, separate from KDE frameworks for the simple reason that uh, the Qt version that Kirigami needed was higher than the one that KDE Frameworks depended on at the time. Um, by now, this gap has been closed, and uh, with KDE Frameworks 5.37, Kirigami will be an official part of KDE Frameworks. Yeah, next up. So, um, right, yes, that one's mine. Um, right, so. When you create a Kirigami application, you have two options. Uh, the most important point here is that you have to have a container to host your application. Um, and for the longest time, that was called application window, which was basically uh, a, a minor change on top of the uh, Qt Quick Controls 2 application window. Uh, these days, uh, which will become apparent slightly later why that's important. We also have a thing called an application item, slide, uh, which simulates uh, the application window API. Unfortunately, we couldn't derive from it because that would make it a window and that would be bad because you'd end up hosting a window inside a window and that's a bit ugly. Uh, but uh, what the application item slash window does is it implements some of the core user interface elements which uh, we will uh, show you slightly later. Uh, it, uh, it adds properties for uh, inserting the user interface elements that the HIG defines as properties on, on this so that it is very straightforward to, to construct the application without necessarily having to specify what edge something has to sit on or whatever. Um, it also provides a very convenient method for showing passive notifications, the little toast things that you see on Android and iOS and so on, uh, also recently on, on various other desktop applications, passive notifications which don't really uh, have any kind of interactivity with a small caveat. Um, but the purpose of them basically is to not do anything uh, other than give you information. You're not supposed to do anything with them. Um, and so the organization of an application in Kirigami is, uh, is conceived as a scrollable row of pages. And pages are uh, what we'll mention next. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Um, as already mentioned, uh, a typical Kirigami application is um, divided into pages. Um, usually on, on mobile, you only see one, one page at a time, um, whereas on a, uh, if you scale up the same application to a desktop computer, you may uh, very well see multiple pages in the form of columns in your UI. Um, yeah, this, if, if you use uh, the, the page class, then you already get uh, all the standard behavior that the human interface guidelines uh, describe. And um, one thing that yeah, makes, it, makes it easy is that you have actions properties. Um, how they are going to be visualized, we will see later. But um, you have a, a main action, which will be the most prominent in your UI. and um, so this is in a, in a button, which is, which is uh, on, the, on the bottom center. And it can also have a left and right uh, wing or sub button. We call them uh, secondary actions, which you can uh, also just define in, in the page. And they will automatically show up and be usable. And um, it can also define contextual actions. And uh, these will then be shown in a contextual drawer, which I will also get to. Um, then something that will, you are likely to also use often is a so-called scrollable page. So um, 
yeah, often it's, it's lists of items or maybe just uh, layouts which are too, uh, too long for one screen. So you want them to be scrollable. Um, and Kirigami also make, makes, uh, makes that pretty easy. And um, yeah, so you don't need to handle all the flickables yourself. The scrolling page will do that for you. And uh, it also has nice things such as if you have a list which uh, you can refresh from some uh, network source, for example, um, you can do the pull down. So if you, uh, if you scroll to the first item of the list and then you pull down further, then it automatically refreshes to give you newer items. Um, and also something that was uh, an idea that was introduced in, uh, in iOS at the point when phones became too large to reach everything with your thumb is that you can pull down the top of your UI so that um, everything that was at the top uh, moves towards the center and you can reach it with your thumb. Right. And then we have the drawers, which are uh, basically items which sit on top of everything else. Uh, they are a convenient way of uh, giving you access to actions and supporting content to help with the things that are inside, uh, the, uh, inside the page. So the base class is overlay draw, which allows you to, if you, if, if you need something that is not supported by the core elements that we've got, mentioned shortly, um, uh, you can create your own as well, which is quite useful. Um, it will attach to any edge, and um, it was originally created uh, because Qt Quick Controls 1 didn't have a drawer, but uh, not, a, not, not a drawer the way that we needed it. Uh, but these days, it is API compatible with the one that exists in QQC2. Um, we also have a specific uh, implementation of it, which allows you to push it onto the screen. This is less important on a desktop, where you are working commonly in a window that doesn't sit against the screen edge. But if you are working on a pure touch user interface, uh, say a phone or a tablet, uh, on, incidentally, any kind of, you, uh, of, of platform, not just Android and iOS. This is, is also a problem on Ubuntu and on Windows. Um, you need to be able to swipe it onto the stage. And so you can do that on some of these platforms, um, the ones where those edges are not taken up by the system. You can do that by simply swiping your finger along the edge on, on, the, um, on the screen. But we have specifically Ubuntu and Windows 8 and 10 where that's not possible because that means on Windows 10 in particular that you suddenly are in a different application, uh, which then meant that we had to come up with a way of, of making, making that easy to get to, which means we've now got a hook sort of gesture where you push up from the bottom of the screen and then uh, pull uh, to either side to show the corresponding draw. Um, yes, I think the next one is your, but let's see. Yep. Yeah, so by, um, by default, there are two draws, um, the global draw and the context draw. The, the global draw is sort of the, the main menu of the, uh, of the application. It is very similar um, to the, the menu draw that you have in many Android applications. And uh, yeah, it, it slides in from, um, from the left, so either by an, by an edge swipe or there's also uh, a little handle that you can, uh, that you can use to open it. Um, and yeah, it has a, a big fancy title with, uh, where you can put an, an image in the background to make it uh, yeah, look even nicer. And um, it has a, a main menu which can also have multiple levels. Um, and then you can also uh, put in additional controls. As you can see here, you can also put in checkboxes, sliders, whatever you want. Um, the, the global draw is used for everything that is the same at any point in the application so that users know that whenever they open the, the global draw, they know what's going to be in there. They know what they can do with it. Um, in contrast, the context draw, as the name suggests, 
um, is dependent on your current context. So, for example, it can have controls that apply to the uh, current element that you have selected in the main view, or it can just uh, change depending on where you currently are. Uh, for example, um, if you have a document viewing application and you have controls that depend on uh, what kind of document is currently open, um, then these will be shown in the context drawer. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, it's also uh, the elements are uh, aligned to the bottom so that you can easily reach them with your thumb when using it with just one hand. Um, yeah, but then there are also um, custom drawers, as already mentioned. So you can, you are not restricted to these main drawers. So the the global and context drawers are very easy to implement because they're pretty much already there. You just uh, have to fill them with things. Um, but you can also use additional drawers for any um, arbitrary use you have. Um, for example, a, a bottom drawer can be used as um, sort of a, a dialog, which is in a material design is uh, called sheet. Um, so when you have something where you want to uh, give users quickly some kind of some way to react to something, you can use a, a draw so it, you don't have to replace the whole main screen. And then there's the uh, overlay sheet, which um, yeah, is, is better suited for when you have uh, larger content. So the, the big advantage uh, of that is that you can scroll even within the sheet. So one sheet can be larger than the, um, than the screen height, um, which means, yeah, you can, you can show additional content on top of your main content, but people can still scroll through it. But then once they have reached either the top or the bottom, then they can just flick it away to close it again easily. Yeah, then one thing that I've already talked about, uh, the primary action button. So if you define a primary action in your, uh, in your application window, then um, it will create a primary action button for you which sits at the uh, bottom center. So again, very easy to reach with your thumb. Um, and you can, just, uh, you can just tap it, and, but it also serves as an additional handle for the drawer. So if you just uh, press on the, on the button, but don't uh, release, but instead swipe left or right, then you can also open uh, the drawers with this, which is just uh, a nice additional gesture. Um, yeah, but... In for this is uh, certainly mobile um, optimized, but the same actions on, on a desktop uh, UI can go into a toolbar. So um, that is again something where Kirigami helps with the, uh, with the convergence that you don't have to necessarily manually define everything that is different between mobile and desktop. The framework can do that for you. Um, yeah, uh, another neat thing is the, the so-called swipe list item. Um, so this is something where you have um, a list with contextual actions to, to the uh, specific list items. There's uh, one way to do that, uh, to implement that is using the context drawer, but if you often have something that you want to do quickly with a list item, then um, a better way to do this is that you have a little handle on the list item which you can just Swipe so away to reveal controls beneath it, um, yeah, which gives you a very, very easy way to quickly do things. For example, if you have, let's say, um, a list of items, then you have things like uh, delete the item, or um, if you want to, if you have a list of emails, then you can quickly reply without having to uh, open the full email first. Um, the, the application header, um, so this is the, the title of the, um, of the page, but it also doubles as a, a breadcrumb because as, as we've already said, the, the typical thing that you do in Kirigami is using pages um, and as you navigate through the pages, the uh, application header creates a, um, yeah, a breadcrumb which is interactive so you can easily go back to any previous page by just uh, tapping on it in the, um, in the header. Yeah. Right. 
So uh, there are, th this obviously is not everything, oh dear, this obviously is not everything that exists. I'm going to rush through this for a bit. Um, uh, there is more stuff in Kirigami. We have a, uh, a class called an action, which is kind of similar to a queue action, but uh, which um, can be used more, uh, more pleasantly in uh, Qt Quick. Um, we have list items which are not the swipe list item, so if you need something which is just a list item, um, you've got access to that as well. Um, the item view header, which uh, I will show you momentarily, um, which makes things pretty, uh, and we've got a header and a, lab a heading and a label, which are uh, semantic markup for uh, text, uh, just pure text. We have an icon, which uh, basically emulates the uh, the Q icon loading system on. Uh, uh, without using a uh, queue icon loader. Um, and we have the toolbar application header, which is the thing you saw just before, which basically means even if you are not on a mobile, you, uh, even if you are on a mobile, you can still use the toolbar if you particularly feel the need to do so. So it's a thing that you can choose to do. We suggest you don't, but you can. <laughs> um, and then there are a few applications which uses Kirigami. Yeah, um, yeah one of the, the first uh, examples that we had was uh, Subsurface Mobile. Uh, Subsurface is a um, dive log application which was started uh, by uh, Linus Torvalds and uh, De Kondel. Um, and uh, yeah, they wanted to create a, a mobile application. They had just recently switched um, their desktop application from GTK to Qt. So, uh, of course, now they didn't want to learn yet another technology. Um, they wanted to, um, yeah, to use Qt there as well. And then uh, we told them, hey, we, we, have, we are currently creating that framework. Uh, it could be useful for you because it will make things a lot easier for you. And uh, since then, there has been a quite uh, good collaboration with the, with the team. They have given us a lot of input. We have helped them. They have given us ideas for new features and, um, yeah. Both have benefited a lot from this. It's always nice to have external customers when you're working on a product, right? Um, here's one of our own, uh, and it shows you the um, list view header, which makes things pretty. Um, I realize I just forgot to scroll one of those screenshots, because what it actually does is when you start scrolling the page, it will not be that big which is useful, you will have run into this on Android and iOS in various places. So you start scrolling a list and the header stays visible but becomes really, really small so it's not in the way. Um, and this is obviously discovered, you've probably run into that one at some point. This is Peru's uh, somewhat smaller project uh, which is, uh, looks a little silly right now because it is in the process of being uh, remade somewhat but it is uh, a, an application which aims to fully implement Kirigami uh, as a HIG uh, describes it um, and uh, function in, uh, on both mobile and desktop uh, with as few changes as absolutely possible um, for reading your comics. And uh, then we have the very early stages of Caligridi MNI2 which was the reason for the creation of the application item uh, because as much as this just looks like a, um, a, a straightforward Kirigami application there, what it actually is, is it sat inside, a, uh, in, inside another uh, main window which will switch between a QWidget based UI um, and a, a Kirigami Q quick based UI, um, which is the Gemini thing. If you've spoken with me for the last couple of years, you will have heard me talk about this at length, so I'll not do that here. Uh, <laughs> there are other applications out there that are not ours uh, purely, uh, or some which are really ours, which is uh, ClimbGrade, which is Marco's uh, own. Uh, you will notice a, a, an overweight of extreme sports here. 
Um, <laughs> we have uh, Coco, which is uh, an image viewer project which has a uh, summer of code project to port the UI uh, to uh, Kirigami. It was originally written back before Kirigami was a thing. Uh, and we have Rukula, which I learned here, <laughs> is, uh, is also getting a, a, a Kirigami UI. Uh, and, of course, all of the projects that you guys are working on. So please, <laughs> uh, come talk to us, which is probably not now, I understand. <laughs> but, yes. So let's have at, at most two questions and let Kevin prepare. I have sort of a really nerdy question, but it's short. Oh, yeah. um, what's the ratio of QML code to C++ code in the implementation of Kirigami? There is very little C++ code. Uh, the icon thing, I guess. Uh, yes, the desktop icon thing is pure uh, uh, pure cute code, uh, pure sorry, uh, it's all cute code, pure yeah, C++ yeah. code, okay. um, because we needed that to do it in any way efficiently. Uh, there is a non-C++ implementation of it for, uh, I think it was originally written because of subsurface uh, needing it, uh, but is usable in, in any application. So if you don't want the C++, or if you don't want the, all the abilities that the okay. desktop icon uh, implementation gives you, there is a, another option as well. A very, very lightweight thing which just loads icons out of a QRC. So it leads to a second question. Uh, based on the blog from the, from the guys, the kid guys, last, I think two weeks ago, about the performance in C++ and QML, how are you willing to think about changes, maybe some parts of the components to C++ just to improve the performance? That is essentially what we've done. So the really, really uh, performance dependent bits are done in C++. Uh, it is surprisingly minimal, uh, but the performance there is, yes, that's why certain bits are been in C++. But there isn't, there isn't a great deal of it. So most, a lot, yes, actually, he will know a lot more. Quickly. <laughs> uh, yes, just uh, very quickly, a uh, small, uh, um, uh, small recap on this. Um, so basically, uh, now it's called Kirigami 2 uh, because we uh, basically re-implemented it completely from base to directly queue quick items to based on top of Qt quick controls too. So, uh, the amount of QML that is being insta in instanced is uh, already way less. Um, that blog post was very interesting, and what I would hope it comes out of that is Qt Quick Controls 2 getting at least a bit of public C++ API, and then at that point we can even go further uh, doing some of our control as actual C++ subclasses of uh, Qt Quick Controls 2 classes. Okay, that's all the time that we have. So let's give a warm thank you very much. Not a welcome, but.